progress. Good morning, brothers and sisters. As we continue our study in Judges chapter two, shall we seek the Lord's guidance so that we may more fully understand that which is being presented and have an idea as to how this relates with what we are seeing today. Shall we pray? Gracious Father in heaven, we are seeing that like sheep we have turned astray. We have gone in our own paths and in our own ways. Help us, guide us, Father. Show us that which we need now. Help us so that our characters may become cleansed. So that we may be more prepared for your robe of righteousness. Help us to be prepared to give the invitation to give this last message of warning to those within this world. Be with us now, please guide us, direct us, show us that which you would have us to do. In this Father, we pray, and in this we thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, so where we left off yesterday, we've come down now to Judges 2, verse 22 and 23. Now, these are a continuation of the warning that's being given in Judges 2, verse 20 and 21. I'll read these briefly, and then Brother Theodore has something that he would like to share. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. That through them I may prove Israel whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily, neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. So <clears throat> we are aware that Joshua has died by this time. We are also aware that we are applying this within the movement. We are applying then Elder Jeff as being the equivalent symbol of Joshua. So, are you ready, Theodore? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so what we're looking at, you know, we have these years uh, being represented by these verses. So Judges 2.22 would represent the year 2022. And Judges 2.23 would represent the year 2023. Now, um, so I'm going to... The reason I can't do this... What is going on? Can you stop the share? For some reason, I can't. Oh, here, just hang on. I can figure it out. I figured it out. Um, so. so I'm sharing my screen here. You have to stop. Oh, I have to stop the share. There we go. And then I do it this way. So I'm sharing my screen here. Now, what we're going to look at is um, 
This is a call-in study and of the, the prediction regarding, and of course he doesn't like the term prediction, but regarding what's going to happen with the midterm elections and the presidents of the United States. And as we pointed out before, um, from November 3rd, 2020 to the siege of Washington on January 6th, 2021 is a period of 65 inclusive days. That means you would include all of November 3rd and all of January 6th. And this is going to be the period from Biden's election to really when Biden comes into power. It's before his inauguration, but we couldn't have predicted this. So the fact that you have this siege on January 6th is obviously prophetic. And then what um, Colin had done is he had marked this midterm election coming up on November 8th. And he had just used the symbols of 46 and 19. But we know that this represents, uh, can be represented as days. And the date that we would get, the span of time is 65 days, including all of November 8th and all of January 11th, 2023. Now, the interesting thing here is we have 2023. That is, the predictions that are being made are, are going to 2023, even though he's not predicting that date, right? So I have to clarify that Colin isn't making this prediction. But we do see that these structures, the 780 days from 1122 to January 11th, and the same type of idea from the beginning of November 3rd to the center here, where you got 718 days from the siege to the center, and 781 days from November 3rd uh, to the center here. And the center they put there as the 1224, or I put it there. I think Colin puts it as 1225, which doesn't, well, there he would be putting this as not inclusive. He would put in the B, well, that doesn't even work out though. I don't think the 1225 works out, um, but that's what he puts in his study. And so we have all of these different symbols uh, from November 3rd to Biden's inauguration is 78 days, which we know then is also uh, 1,872 hours. So again, we have a symbol of July 18, 2020. So, so we have all of this symbolism connected with this. But we know that this, this, uh, these verses in Judges chapter 2 seem to line up with this movement, but it only goes to verse 23. And, and, and it's in God's providence that we're studying all of these things at the same time because they all start to come together. So I'm now going to go to the whiteboard and just hang on. I got to do this right. Um, so stop share. Um, what am I doing wrong? Okay. <clears throat> so what we had done, um, uh, yesterday, I'd done a little bit of a study on this. But we know that uh, from the first day of the first month, this is in the story of Ezra. We get to the first day of the first month, and this is uh, 456 BC, and this is in 457 BC, right? So we have this span of time, and we, we have also, uh, the first day of the 10th month, and we have the 20th day of the ninth month. We got lots of other dates in here, but these are the ones that are important. And we had talked about how many days this is. Well, I actually worked it out. This is 88 days and this is 11 days. Now, we also had understood, so this goes to 
my studies on Sabbath. And if we go to the first day of the first month in 1844, and we count 2,300 months, so that we're, we're using a day for a month, At, at the prophecy instead of a day for a year. So we know that Miller had the 2300 days come to the first day of the first month. They would end on the first day of the first month in 1844. And then we counted 186 days to October 22nd, 1844. Right, 187 days inclusive. But this period here represents 186 years. That is, if you take 2,300 months, 29.530587 days, and you, multi you, you multiply it together, it's 186 biblical years to the day. So we have this 186 years, and this brings us to April 5th, 2030. So that's why I've been looking at 2030, because there's many different witnesses that witness to this. Now, when we, um, when we look at this year, and we try to represent this year as this movement, um, I don't know how to represent this. I've never, I've never, okay. I, do it this way, I guess. I'll do it this way. So we're going to have this April 5th date. And um, let me see, how should I do this? Okay, let, let's look at it this way. We'll, we'll do it this way. I'm, I'm trying, I'm going a step ahead. So this period of time is here we have 2300 months. So could we take these days and convert them into months? That is 88 months and 11 months. Does that make sense? If, if this is going to the first day of the first month, and this period of time is representing this period of time of 2,300 months, could I count 88 months and 11 months here out of this whole period of time? This period of, uh, what was it? Um, what was the number of days? It was, uh, so somebody give me the numbers days. I know it's, I think it's, is it 96,920? Uh, somebody can just do the math for me. 2,300 months, multiply 2,300 by 29.530587. We'll give them the number of days there. So if we did this and we were going to do 11 months and we were going to do 88 months, we could arrive at dates in our time, correct? It's logical. Okay. So now we could do it different ways. We could do the 29.530587 months, but we could also just use prophetic months. Now, the number 88 is, of course, significant because one of the things I know is that 3 times 88 is 264. So I know that 88 times 30 is 2640 days. And 11 days, 11 months times 30 is how many? Should be easy math. 330. Okay, so 330 days. Now, if I count back from April 5th, 2030, because I've already done this uh, a month or so ago, um, we come to this date, January 12th, 2023. So if we remember in Colin's structure, his last date is January 11th, 2023. And that's from November 8th, 
2022. And this period of time here is 65 inclusive days. That means all of November 8th, including all the way up to all of January 11th. Now, when I do this count here, it's actually, I'm counting from the beginning of April 5th, all the way back to the beginning of January 12th. So January 12th ends when January 11th begins, or January 12th begins where January 11th ends, correct? Understood. That means that this period of time here in the story of Ezra, from the first day of the 10th month to the first day of the first month in which the divorces occur, that that's what this is repre representing. Does that make sense? And that we already have this marked out by Colin's prediction, the chronology of it. Any, any comment on that? That's an interesting application. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting application. Now, as, as a question from the chat, does the publishment of the true midnight cry yeah. as shown in the Ellen White website, does that date have any position in either of these lines? Okay, if you put that question again, the publishment Okay, according in in the pioneer writings, yeah. you have the True Midnight Cry, Volume One, Number One, shown August. shown as being published twenty second of August of eighteen forty four. Yeah, does that have a position on either of these lines? Well, I haven't given it a position on either of these lines. I don't know how I would. I think, um, Ron just uh, was discussing that before the presentation. So I think he's just adding about that has to do with another subject we were talking about earlier. So it hasn't really to do with what Theodore's presenting. Yeah, I don't think it has to do with what we're presenting. No, here. no, this isn't what we're talking about. This is uh, me and what me and Theodore were talking about earlier, and that's the reference where I found it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so anyway, we have this date here. So that means this is the dividing line. So Colin's prediction is marking the first day of the tenth month. Can we recognize that? Does everybody agree that that makes sense? That's where it lines up. Okay. Now, if I take 330 days, it comes to this date, February 16th, 2022. This is already passed. Now, February 16th has a significance in what way? As a symbol. One, six, uh, six. two. Six times well, six times six. Well, it's two one six, and that was the the dream that I had where I was shown that Samuel Snow's letter, which was February sixteenth, that I could take it as a symbol of two sixteen or two months and sixteen days, and I could count two months and sixteen days to May second, his second letter, then two months and sixteenth days to July eighteenth letter. So. Uh, so it has a symbol of Samuel Snow's letters. It has a symbol of using it to uh, unlock things. Um, it's also six times six times six to 16. Now, the thing is something happened on this date um, that is of significance. So this study here that Colin was doing, you know, going back, we got November 3rd here and January 6, 2021. 
these 65 days. So he was doing this study and I ended up having a conversation with him and, and then I did a study um, regarding what we had discussed. But in the process of that time, uh, the Three Angels Message Fellowship, up to all, all through this time that I've been doing studies, has been listing links to my studies. That is, to the Zoom studies that we, we were doing, they would put my Zoom link. But on February 16th, 2022, they sent out an email and they no longer contained that Zoom link. So what would this mark then as far as um, what we're studying? When they don't send that Zoom link out to my studies on February 16th when they send out their, their, their weekly email, what is that representing? Preparation. You said separation? At a rejection. Okay. Does it represent anything that could be characterized here as at the 20 as the 20 at regarding the 20th day of the ninth month? Because this is lining up with here. Can we put this here? Is, is what I'm asking. And we know that the 20th day of the ninth month, however you want to do this. Terrible. The 20th day of the ninth month, which is December 25th. This is when Colin actually presents his study. Right? Right. He's going to be 53 days or 54 inclusive to this email. Can we say what that did you call it? What did you call it? Email. Spell it. E M A I L. Okay. E so I'm sorry. I, I'm a little deaf. Yeah. Three Angels Fellowship sends out this email. Yeah. Maybe I, I should have a different microphone on. I don't know if people can hear me well. No, I'm just a little deaf, bro. And you were turned away from can, the screen. Okay. So can we say that this 53 days from call and study to February 16th is represented by this 20, 20th day of the ninth month. And in our time, it ends up just being this period of time. Mm. Right? Because this, this become this lines up with the 20th day of the ninth month. Right. If we use these prophetic months, but we already have the symbol of the 20th, 20th day of the ninth month. And this is about call and study, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to then produce this history that's also connected to April 5th, 2030. Mm -hmm. Study opens the door to all that. Yeah. Now, this period of time here, um, you know, is is 383 days, which is, or 384, depending on how you count it, which is the period of time the, uh, that you can have a, uh, a biblical year if there is a leap year. Um, so, you know, there's some things I still have to look at and try to see how, how they line up. But, but the point that I'm making here, I think I'm going to try to keep it simpler, is that you have these 11 days and these 88 days, and they can be represented with this history that we are in right here, part of Colin's study. This is Colin's study history. And so we, we would have to recognize that this is very unlikely to have occurred by chance, right? Yes, and then right. all of these things that we're studying are now just coming together in this understanding, right? That is, we're doing different studies, the 2030 study, and we're doing, we've been doing the, the Collins study dealing with the presidents of the United States. 
And then we've been doing the morning studies in the book of Judges. But the book of Judges is giving us this history all the way up to 2023. It's not giving us this history, but it's giving us this history. So this history that we're involved in right now is what, what we're studying in the book of Judges. It's about this movement. We already decided that. Now, we also have said that it's going to go all the way back to, so I'm going to do this, 9-11, and I'm going to do this. This is going to be January 5th, 2030. So this is 2001. So I just, so we can agree that Ezra gives this history from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, right? Mm. Can we say that this represents from 9-11 to January 5th, 2030? Should that be uh, April 5th? Oh, yeah, April 5th. Thanks. I don't know why I put January. Okay, April 5th, 2030. Now, if I take a year, uh, the year of 457 BC, that's going to end start on... Um, April 26th, and it's going to end on uh, whatever it was, April 14th or 15th, April 15th, I think. It's going to be a period of 354 days. And if I take uh, this period of time, the 20th, wow. what's that? 67,736 days is the number of days from, oh, sorry, most likely more now. I was going from, uh, yeah, so it would be, yeah, I'll go back to you. It's just over uh, 67,000. And it's 67,900 and some will work it out. What are you talking about here? At 60,920 days, if you multiply 2,300, if you did it by, um, so this period of time, anyway, if we take this and we divide this period of time here by 354 days, you actually get almost, it's not exact, but you get, um, that is, instead of dividing this period of time, we're going to divide um, by, by months, we're going to divide it by biblical years, by the average of biblical year. So we're going to take this biblical year. And I'm going to have to do this again so that I can explain it better and give you the proper numbers. But it ends up being about 29.5 days. So which is the average, uh, that's the, the length of the month. That's so uh, 29.530, yep. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so the point is that we have this period of time that, that's represented in the story of Ezra, and that period of time is going to represent from 9-11, September 11th, to April 5th, 2030. And that this period of time here is, is the time that we're in right now. And I need to work it out a little bit more in detail and make it a bit simpler. But this is basically the idea. And, and so we will come back to this in our studies dealing with 2030. <clears throat> Did that make sense to people? Mm. It seems seems to be starting to line up. Okay. Yeah, definitely more clarity. Okay, so so what I'm saying is that um, Colin's prediction, whether he, he he realized it or not, whether he accepts uh, technology. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> How, how, whether we accept his, you know, I mean, he doesn't accept this chronology, 
um, as far as how I've, I've taken his prediction. But the thing is, when we look at it literally, it's going to give us this connection with 2030. And, and I don't think that that can be a chance. Now, I had originally done it here. Uh, I had taken this 2592 days and the 49 days. Now, it's, it's kind of interesting. So February 16th shows up in this structure. So I need to refine this a little bit. But if I take the 88, this period here from January 11th, the end of January 11th to April 5th to the beginning of it is 2,649 days or 2,640 days, which is exactly 88 prophetic months. So I, I could probably draw that here. I'll just do this. And I, I had drawn it out somewhere else uh, already as, as far as the span of time. So if I take this, um, I'll just do it this way. So this is 2,640 days. Uh, which is 88 months. Even if we don't do any of the other things, we could see that this is significant, correct? That this is going to represent that period of the divorcement. Yeah, I can see that. And and so this is when this movement is going to divorce from its strange wives. Now, are you I, saying I want, that in that 2640 days from yeah, that's January 21st to April 5th, 2030? Yeah. Now, remember, I'm using this as a symbol. That is, I, I'm not saying that, that this history has to be completed in this span of time. I'm just saying that this symbol is being given to us. It could be right. just symbolic time and not be literal time, right? So I'm not making a prediction that this has to happen over this period of 88 months. Mm. That's when it's completed. I'm just saying that symbolically, we can take this time and look at it. And this is an important distinction. We know that this can be a symbol. And so we should just accept that it's a symbol and not and not something that's literal. If it turns out being literal, that this becomes a literal number of days and something happens on April 5th, 2030, well, that's fine. But there's no reason that we would have to make that assumption because we've already had lots of symbolic time in our lines where nothing happened on specific dates, but the symbols were there. And, and so all we could say is that once we get to the end of Colin's structure, we know that his prediction will have been over. And we, and we could even already say this, you know, once all of this is over and nothing happens, according to Colin's prediction, Trump is not president, then we're going to see that people are going to start leaving the movement or or changing. I agree. Their, I right? agree. Either leaving the movement or coming to examine things more closely and, and recognizing the things that we're saying, for instance, in our studies, that those must have been correct. I agree with that as well. Right. So so nowhere should somebody take this and say, I'm I'm predicting and just like Colin isn't predicting this date either. So we're not saying that Colin is predicting this date. It's All just you're saying is we see something here and we don't know what it exactly is. And we won't until the days pass. It's, it's, been, a, it's been our history. We, we make mistakes and we don't really realize what they are until after the event has passed. How can we do anything better? Right. And, and, we, and we can see that events are unfolding. When I look at the February 16th date, 2022, and I see that they have removed the link to my Zoom studies in that email for the first time, that then we can say, well, 
you know, that's not accidental. I agree, not accidental. Right. February, that, 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 February 16th, too. Yeah. yeah, and it's also the symbol of February 16th, which which yeah. I can produce here. This 2592 days is one tenth of a the parts of a Hebrew day. They divide their day into uh, 2,520 2, parts, which are three and a third seconds in length each. So, um, so I just noticed I could divide this period of time by that. Now you'll see here this is going to be um, because I'm going from January 11th. It would actually be 2,640 days. So this is what we would call exclusive. So when I put an X by it, that means I'm actually counting the days in between. And that's because this goes to the end of January 11th. Right. Now there's a little conversation going on in the chat. Can somebody explain what's being discussed there? Well, um, Aaron had posted in the WhatsApp chat um, that Genesis 1 1, the word value for it is 411, and yeah. then reverse 777. Yeah. And uh, if, uh, if you add 411 and 777, it gives you 1188. So you have that 1188. And then it's the last uh, chapter. I think of the Bible. I think the, the Bible is, is it 1188 chapters? Or maybe, okay. I'm, not, maybe I'm wrong here. Maybe Aaron, you can explain that. I, so, it, yeah, it has to do with um, the gematria. Um, because there's 44 characters, um, and you, you can add each, by, multiply each by 27. Um, if you're, because he's, Stephen had added the forward and reverse gematria that you get. Um, so that's the number you'd get 1188 if you add those together for the first and last Bible verse, verses. Okay, so, okay, so, so this 1188, this 11 months and 88 months then has its representation in Genesis 1-1, which symbolizes the first day of the first month, by the way, right? Yes. Okay. I mean, it's the first day of creation. <laughs> so it better represent that. Yeah, okay. So I think there's 1,189 chapters in the Bible, according to a Google search like that there. So we just want more. Okay. Can you explain that, Aaron, about the number of verses? That why 1188 would be? Um, if there's 1188. I think, I think that's close. It, I think it's actually, are you, think, are you talking about chapters, Stephen? Because I think there's 11... 99, so, or wait a second. It's, it's 1189 chapters. That's, that's what I thought. I thought you maybe meant no. uh, chapters rather than verse. It doesn't It doesn't quite sound right. I think, it, because cause I know it's less than 1190. Um, so I think it's 1189. Oh yeah, so, maybe you're right. Okay, so 1189, so it's close. Um, not sure what that means. Now, uh, the last verse. What's the last verse that you're talking about that adds up the same way in the chat? You mentioned this. Yeah. So the last verse in the Bible, Revelation, is 2221. Anyway, I, it's it's gonna it's gonna be the same number because uh, it's also 44 characters because the first verse in the Bible is 44 characters, last verse is 44, and so you're going to get the same number because you just multiply by 27 if, you, if you're trying to find the sum of the gematria. But it actually is 528 and uh, 6600. 
No, not. Is that right? Six sixty. Right. Yeah. So, but it'll it'll still add up to the same number. So if you take the number of characters, it's the same. Times twenty seven is eleven eighty eight. So the number yes. of characters yep. are just in that verse in English. In the King exactly, James. King James. And then the 27 comes from? Oh, that's just... Um, if you have one, so you're counting in one direction for A, yep. and then you have 26 counting the other direction, you just add those together, you get 27. And it, it applies to any letter, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, I understand. So yeah, so you're starting on on A is the first letter, so that's number one, and then you get to Z, that would be number twenty six. Yeah, twenty six plus one is twenty seven. Yep. Okay. Okay. So so this eleven eighty eight becomes significant. Uh, so what is this telling us then regarding what we're studying? In, in Judges. Dwight, do you have any thoughts on this? And you can put up your notes again if Dwight's there. I'm here. <clears throat> I've just been listening. Okay. We'll put up your notes because you're switching over to you now. Are you guys throwing away the 19 and the 20? The Republican and the General Conference. Okay, so so what are you asking, Rosanna? What are you what are you saying? Are you throwing away the nineteen and the twenty? Oh, I I'm not throwing away anything. That's that's the twenty. No, we're not throwing that away. Um, we we're, we're really not addressing. But you're talking about the Republican presidents and the conference presidents. So there's Ted Wilson's yeah. the 20th conference president and um, Trump was the 19th. No, we don't throw that away. But, uh, why, why would you ask that question? I'm trying to figure out what, what you're asking. What? Well, if there's a... a... You've thrown in a, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> okay. okay, I came in late today, so I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we're not we're not really addressing that. I'm I'm going to address that uh, still because that's one thing I didn't address in our study on the presidents of the United States. So can you share your sc screen, Dwight? And. Um, and I'm, but I'm going to address that because that's one of the points with Colin's study is he's dependent upon uh, Ted Wilson still being uh, the president of the general conference when the Sunday law comes in. And, and I don't know if he's addressed that in, in any of his studies. I mean, I would think that he still thinks Ted Wilson would be the president after this general conference session coming up, uh, which starts in June. Can't remember the dates of it, but um, would you think that also? Well, I don't think it matters because we've already had the fulfillment of the Sunday law we were predicting, which was the pandemic, and so Trump was the president, as was Ted Wilson. That's that's what we were predicting. We were predicting a typical line. We weren't predicting the actual Sunday law. So the pandemic came in. And, and we saw that with Odilio's study, with the mandates and how that fitted with our period of 777 days. So to look for Trump and Biden to now continue and, and other people to sort of continue on this study of what we had predicted, to me would be denying the study that we predicted. That is, what we had predicted, what Jeff had predicted regarding the pandemic, and the Sunday law was fulfilled. We already had that fulfillment, but it was typical. It was a type of what is going to happen. So we're not, we don't have to have the presidents of the United States and the presidents of uh, 
the Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists to be any particular number when the Sunday law comes in. That, that's my understanding of it. And, th and that's what this movement really has not come to grips with is the typical nature of our lines. That is, we're looking for the actual Sunday law to be happening, you know, this year or early next year, and that's not going to happen because that's not what we're predicting. That's not what any of this that has been happening in our movement, which is internal, has been trying to say. And, and once we come to grips with that and understand our experience, then we can understand what our mission is, what it is we're supposed to do. And, and this is what Judges chapter two, I believe is addressing, is it's, 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 it's typifying this movement and this comes to 2023 and uh, points us to the fact that that's really, it, it leads us to the end of Colin's prophecy or prediction, however we want, want to characterize it. Okay, so Dwight, and hopefully that was helpful, Rosanna. I know, yeah, I'm not, not sure if you've been watching the videos uh, this week, but... There, there's a lot of information there that you'd have to sort through. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, now to return to where where we were beginning at this at the close of this chapter, mm -hmm. I think it's easy for us to understand that when we're looking from Judges two nineteen to the end of the chapter that from 220 onward in these four verses Christ is giving a proclamation now in 219 we used the symbology in going through this verse and it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them and to bow down unto them. They ceased not from their own doings nor from their stubborn way. The application we addressed yesterday was that when the claim was made that Elder Jeff was, quote, dead. Parminder, whose name means God of gods. <laughs> and Tess returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods, other idols and to choose to serve those idols and to bow down onto those idols. And they came out with their proclamation regarding salvation for the sisters within the movement. So the proclamation that comes now from 220 to the end of this chapter becomes very direct for us. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he, Christ, said, because that this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, and have not hearkened unto my voice, I also <clears throat> will not henceforth drive out any from before them of the nations which Joshua left when he died. Do we make, <clears throat> do we agree and make the application with Elder Jeff representing Joshua? That was agreeable. Okay. Now in these situations, We have, and we went over some of the verses that the translators had paired with this section. 
So when we're looking at Judges 2.21, we come down and we're given reference back to Joshua 23.13. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. Did we observe that there have become snares that were placed in 2021? Did we observe that there were issues in 2021 that came up within this movement? I have to say yes. Okay. Now, the verse that was referenced prior to this begins when you have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God. Is this not saying to us today that we have transgressed the covenant? I mean, it's a very direct, pointed statement. Okay, so part of this is what is the covenant for this movement? What if the covenant is taking the word of God just as it reads? Well, I mean, that definitely would be part of it. So, so we could say that Miller's rules are part of that covenant? Correct. Yes. Uh, the charts are part of that covenant? Yes. Yes. Uh, our understanding of Daniel 11, verse 40 to 45. Gabe? Yes. And the 2520. And all of the truths that come out of it, that would include the chronology, that would include July 18th. These all would agreeable. All, those would all be part of this covenant because that's what was given to this movement. Would it also include that Rome establishes the vision? Yeah, that would include that as well, yeah. The point being, there are many within the movement that are attempting to place the word of man ahead of the word of God. Well, isn't that the natural thing to do? It's the way man has, has operated because we would rather have our word because we have the, the attitude that we're capable to give our word and fulfill it, but we're not. God has promised what he will do. How do we become righteous by faith if we do not rely completely and totally on the word of God? Um, you have none, really. I have observed many situations with myself, but also with others within the movement. I know of a party highly respected by those that are on the fringes of the movement. And by fringe, I'm referring to those that as of this day are yet still close to Emiliano. This party is very open that the health laws are not binding. How can you be within the movement and expressing 
your understanding and, and verbal assent to the validity of the seven times of Leviticus 26, if you are then saying that the health laws are of non-effect? Are you not setting aside the word of God? Yep, absolutely. It's the lesser light, right? It's still the light. Well, light is light. Well, yes. Right arm of the gospel. Exactly. But my, my point is that whether we consider it greater light or lesser light, it is yet light because you only have light or darkness. True. Two classes. Well, you know them by their fruit, right? Agreed. So when we deal with these situations, when we have some that are setting aside the word of God, because it's inconvenient for them. That we don't need to listen or accept what Ellen White has had to say, because that was for her time, not for ours. Where do we draw the line? Are we with G.I. Butler? where he could classify the portions of the Bible that were important and unimportant? Do we agree with Uriah Smith, where he said in classes in Battle Creek that when Mrs. White has an open vision, that that is from God, but when she gives the testimony, that's just her opinion. And that was his opinion. Exactly. Are we safe to set aside any portion of the word of God? Negative. That's falling into the abyss. <clears throat> Is that also not falling into a snare? Well, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So here we are in the, in the portion of Judges 2 that we are ascribing to the year that we're in. We read that through them, I may prove Israel, whether they will keep the way of the Lord to walk therein as their fathers did keep it or not. Are we not being proved at this time? Yes. Most definitely. Therefore, the Lord left those nations without driving them out hastily. Neither delivered he them into the hand of Joshua. Well, you know. Um, if we are taking this as uh, basically the prophecy, um, <laughs> we know what we're in for for sure. Um, pretty much sounds like it's gonna we're gonna be um, argued with tooth and nail um, from inside the group. That's what it appears like to me. I'm just reading the leaves agree. there. Our strictest battles are going to be with ourselves. I agree with that. We are going to find that there are those, however, around us those that we care about. 
that are going to oppose much of what is being said. I've had multiple people when I have shared with them some of the light that we have been addressing that have come back to me saying, well, you're writing these things out so strangely. Why are you writing your dates in the European fashion? Can't you write them in the American fashion? Why are you, why, why can't you make this chronology much simpler? Because that's the way it's presented to us, isn't it? Yeah. So <laughs> that's the example. Well, we have both the European and the American uh, order, but we also have the biblical order. Right. Well, my comment and my thought, are we yet as babies where we desire milk alone? Or are we willing to step up and begin to eat the meat that's being given. We cannot spoon feed everyone at this point. There is milk to be offered, yes, but there is also meat in due season. One of the points that has come very clear to me, when we are examining positions such as what Colin has taken. We're able to see that there is light there. We may not agree with the conclusions, but we do agree that there's light. Yes, we do. We're not setting aside what has gone on here. We are attempting to understand, even though asking questions has been forbidden by some. Because how do you learn if you can't ask questions? Yeah, you really can't. I mean, you have to observe what's going on and it's a lot harder than interaction. So as we are looking at this, we're given an overview of what we're going to see throughout the balance of the book of Judges. Taking Judges chapter two as a framework for what is currently happening within the movement, I believe is going to open a door to even greater light that we're going to be showing the validity of what's been occurring within the movement. And we're going to be showing our great need to pay attention to what is being said currently. Well, I, you know, I mean, I'm going to do a better presentation than what I did this morning on this, because I've already figured some things out that would help explain it. So I'll do that on Friday evening. But I mean, it, it's so, to me, it's so remarkable that we can take the story of Ezra from chapter, or from first day of the first month to the first day of the first month, that spirit period of a year, and that we can line it up from September 11th to April 5th, 2030. And that we can take these spans of time as days from the 20th day of the ninth month to the first day of the 10th month and then to the first day of the first month and mark dates connected to predictions that are being made by people in this movement. And, and it speaks to everything that we have been studying. That it's not like it's something just taken out of, you know, left field, doesn't come out of left field. It's, it's everything's coming together for us to be able to see in this movement that we have a problem that we have to address. And that problem that we have to address is the very problem we've been studying in Judges chapter two. 
okay? Right, we, we have to be converted. We have to go into covenant, not, not just as individuals, because that happens. You know, individuals have to be converted. But God is giving us really very specific instructions about what, what is going to happen in this movement. That he's testing us, he's proving us. And I mean, the question is, are we gonna fail or not? Are we gonna, are we gonna pass this test or not? What happens to us if we don't pass the test? Well, God just passes on to someone else. There you have it. Do we, is it not already said that if we do not accept the word of the Lord, that we will then die from off the land that he has promised? Mm -hmm. That's what the text says. So we have a choice. As we look at these examples and as we go forward, we need to address, are we going to choose to follow the covenant? Now, the issue that's going to come up with many outside of the movement is in order to follow the covenant, we have to follow the law. Yeah, but then you're a legalist. But, you know, it's interesting to me that it's important for them to follow the law with the exception of the fourth promise. Everything else, all of the others are important. Except for the fourth. And it was the only one you were told to remember. Correct. Now, we're going to do a brief overview of some of the things that we're going to be looking at through the balance of this week. So I'm going to switch screens. Because now we're going to begin to look upon Judges chapter 3. We're going to have to be placing Judges 3 on a line as we go through this mentally, and then we're going to start looking at it completely, because this is showing us the work that's going to have to be done very soon, and what the Lord is doing to prepare us for this work. As the translators had seen this, the nations which were left to prove Israel, and they give a good delineation of this. By intercourse with them, the Israelites are seduced into idolatry. By verse 8, they are sold into the hand of Kushan Rishthalim, but delivered by Othniel. And into the hand of Eglon, the king of Moab, but delivered by Ahud. Shamgar slayeth 600 Philistines with an ox goad and delivereth Israel. As we're looking at this, we're being shown the first of the judges in the time after Joshua. Now, these first verses. Now, these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them, even as many of Israel had not known all the wars of Canaan. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, at least such as before them nothing, knew nothing thereof. Namely, five lords of the Philistines, and all the Canaanites, and the Sidonians, and the Hivites, 
that dwell in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering in of Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them, to know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord, which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. So this is the proving or the testing that, that we are, we, we would need to understand this in order to understand what our test is. Right. So we're looking at the five lords of the Philistines, then all of the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites. So we're given Philistine, Canaanite, Sidonians, Hivites. Is it just me um, or does that five um, mean something? <laughs> well, it definitely means something. Yeah. Is there anything unimportant in scripture? Negative. So if this is the case, there's something here for us. How many of these from the divisions of the, of the Philistines through the other nations that are mentioned do we see in this one verse? You have the five lords of the Philistines, Canaanites being six, Sidonians, seven, Hivites, eight. Now you can take it as four nations, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but the five lords of the Philistines are called out specifically because it is five cities that the children of Israel did not conquer. They allowed these people to live among them. And we have this confirmed in the next verse. And the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites, Hivites, and Amorites, and Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. How many do we count here? Six. And they took their daughters to be their wives, and gave their daughters to their sons, and served their gods. They entered into a league with the nations around them. This was expressly forbidden. Yet they chose to do so. Now, when we come through here into Judges 3, verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam and the groves. Again, proving the point. Balaam, Ashtoreth. In the time of Elijah, priests of Baal, and the priest of the grove. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of Cushan, Rishathim, king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan, Rishathim, eight years another eight. This is being done only as an overview because we're going to be returning to it in greater detail. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a de deliverer to the children of Israel and who delivered them, 
even Othniel, the son of Canaz, Caleb's younger brother. As a symbol, who is, who is Othniel? Well, he represents the power of God. Well, if you're going to look at Othniel literally, who is Othniel? Well, he's the grandson of Caleb, or he'd be not the grandson. Uh, he would be the nephew of Caleb. Was he not part of the generation that came with Joshua across the Jordan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it says he was the younger brother of Caleb. I think you're uh, right. Oh, so he's the younger. So, so I'm just reading this wrong. So Othniel is Caleb's younger brother. He's the son of Kenaz, though. So they, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I'm, I'm going to throw what may be a strange situation. And I'm, I'm throwing this out for your consideration today. Caleb and Joshua were the two that, of course, were sent as spies before the crossing of the Jordan. They were sent into the promised land to see, are we going to accept the word of God? Are we going to agree to take the land that is offered? Othniel becomes a judge, but he is also Caleb's younger brother. If we were going to apply this, someone that was understanding of the word of Joshua, who we have applied, is a symbol of Elder Jeff. Would we then not look at Othniel as being someone, say, like Elder Toby? I don't, I don't know if you want to try to line people up with individuals. I was already trying that the other day by giving you, Stephen, and Odilio as judges. Yeah, I know, which I don't agree with. Okay. I you say, represent represent that, those that are closest to was closest to Jeff Othniel. Yeah, it would it would represent uh, messages, not individuals. Okay. But what kind of a message has Elder Toby been given? Well, it's it's a message uh, basically that we're all we're all sinners. We all need to be converted. Is that not the message also of Daniel? Mm -hmm. Is that also not a message under which we come to understand righteousness by faith? No. Yeah, so I think it represents a message. So the righteousness by faith message along with the messages of chronology and the examples of chronology are the messages that we need to understand in order to be able to properly address before others the time in which we are in. 
Yeah, I just think, you know, the whole thing of trying to take an individual with Jeff, it's a little bit different because he was the messenger that was raised up at the beginning of this movement. But even in his, he, he symbolically represents things. But, you know, for instance, he's not literally dead. He's no, a symbol. He's not. And, and we he's were only a symbol. Problem. He's only a symbol. Right. And we had these problems back in 2018 where people were trying to label, and, and even before, you know, who's who represents, you know, who was typified by this person. Well, it obviously doesn't pan out. I mean, we know that this movement, for instance, is Samuel Snow, not any one individual. And you can't look at just, you know, because I brought certain light or Stephen has brought certain light, that we then are represented or typified by somebody in Millerite history. It makes uh, sense that it would be the messages that you preach. It's the messages themselves that, that are important. That's right. I, I just think there's a danger when we try to label individuals um, as the particular messengers, other than Jeff, just because of his role was the founder of this movement. But even then, he still is symbolic. Things that happen to him are symbolic. That's 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 my understanding of this. And this was a problem, you know, when we, you know, Jeff then went back on what he believed because he used to believe we shouldn't label into individuals, and he went back on that when he recognized Tess as being Samuel Snow. And I don't think you could make that comparison. Okay, now. Because you can't make the fanatics at the in the Waterton uh, tent, uh, Samuel Snow. No, you can't. Comment from the chat. Othniel, son of Canaz, in a normal sum, would add up to 209, 20th day of the ninth month. Yeah. Yeah, so I think, you know, this is representing a message to this movement right now that this this movement is being raised up or a message in this movement is being raised up maybe we should put it that way there's a message in this movement which relates to the 20th day of the ninth month as a symbol and it's represented by Othniel not some individual so doesn't repentance begin the process so that we can be prepared for righteousness by faith mm -hmm. so in this conversation if othniel is represented by a message then the message that elder toby has been giving and he has been consistent upon this is the message for all at this point that we are all in need of repentance? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's not just the other guy. No. It's an inclusive message. Mm -hmm. It's also a message that requires us to look and look carefully at our own lives and our own characters. Mm -hmm. And that scares many people. Well, we should all know that our lives are not what they're supposed to be. Agreed. I mean, because one is, I don't think we can really fool ourselves, at least if we're honest. The hardest person to lie to is the man or woman in the mirror. Yeah. I mean, some people can do it, but um, you, you really deep down inside must know. Right. Though I, I have to say it is the Holy Spirit that shows us our sins. Satan likes to flatter us more than he likes to accuse us. He, he'll do both. 
because that's how you manipulate people. But, but God never flatters us. The Holy Spirit brings a conviction of sin. He's no respecter of persons. Yeah, if you if are if you're ever flattered by anyone, um, know that it doesn't come from God. We have a lot to cover mm -hmm. within this because if the judges that are raised up are messages, we're now going to be identifying three different messages or three portions of the same message that are going to be important in this movement in the immediate time to come. Mm -hmm. Now, my recommendation to prepare for tomorrow is that we each are going to need to read Judges 3 and come prepared with questions mm -hmm. for different things that we are seeing, different points that we're going to need to address. Because the number one thing about these studies is these are meant to be collaborative with each of us looking to answer questions that we find from this chapter that apply to our lives today. Mm -hmm. Now, as our time is beginning to draw close, are there any other thoughts or questions at this point? Yeah, well, the one thing I just, and I mean, I know I'm going to do another presentation on it, um, but let's see here. Um, I just want to go to. Well, maybe, maybe I won't do that. Um, let's look at it this way. So this 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 year, from the first day of the first month to the first day of the first month in 457 BC, uh, to me is just fascinating. Me now, if we take and and as and I was trying to show there, if we take 911 as the first day of the first month. Then we have April 5th, 2030, as the first day of the first month as well. So, so the history of the story of Ezra is giving this period, which, which we would recognize as being 40 years. Or not 40 years, 20 years, right? From two, 30 years, from 2001 to 2030. It, well, it's basically about 29 years, right? Okay. Uh, 28.6, that, that's what uh, Iran is saying. Now, now, the thing that's interesting is if we, if we take the days, that is the days in 457 BC, it's 354 days, and if each one of those days represents a month in our period of 28.6 years, from September 11th to, to April 5th, 2030. That would make the first month, actually, if we, if we did months, because we'd have to do months, the actual lunar months, there's 354 of them. And the first day of the first month, or in which September 11th is part of, is actually August 22nd. 2001 because that's the first day of the first month if if we count the, uh that out I, I don't know if that makes sense to people but um august 22nd is the first day of that month right now that month is the sixth month but we're gonna have uh 
September 11th is going to be the 21st day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar. So, so this, this period lines up literally that you can take these days, 354 days from 457 BC, and line them up with lunar months in which September 11th exists as the 21st day and, and bring you all the way to April 5th, 2030 as being then the end of that period, the beginning of a new year. I don't know if that makes sense to people, but I'm going to have to draw this out so that people can see it. But to me, it's just extremely profound that we can we can take something that we've understood and we can now see a, a whole bunch of things that we understood and now put them all together in this way. Um, I know everybody can't quite see it the way that I do because it's a lot of pieces, but but I think people will be able to see it. So although it's the 21st day of the sixth month, you're connecting it to the 21st day of the first month. Um, I wasn't necessarily connecting it to the 21st day of the first month. I'm just saying that if we count back from April 5th, 2030, as starting a new year, because that's the first day of the first month, and I count 354 lunar months, that's going to be bring me back to the beginning of the first month as August 22nd, right? And there was a question regarding August 22nd, the true midnight cry, right? Now, September 11th, it doesn't bring us back to September 11th. It brings us back 21 days before September 11th. And we know 21 is a symbol of three weeks. So there's lots of symbolism there. But September 11th exists within that first day, because the first day would be that first month of the 354 months leading up to April 5th, 2030. So I'm, I'm going to have to illustrate it so people can see it. Does, does that make any sense at all, Stephen? Yes, yes. OK. Maybe in the symbology, you could connect it to the 21st day of the first month, because we're thinking that's when the Feast of All Men and Bread ends. Yeah, yeah, you could. You could connect it to um, uh, yeah, 15 C. Well, it technically kind of ends on the 22nd, but um, but yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And if and if you go to September 12th, which which at the end of September 11th, you go the border between September 11th, September 12th is like sunset there. Um, it it goes into the 22nd day of the sixth month on the biblical calendar, which is a symbol of FFA. So so there's lots there. I, I I'm gonna have to unpackage it and present it on Friday evening. Get some diagrams so that people can visualize it. But I, I think it's one of the most profound things that we have found. It's just uh, not easy to to put together in people's minds, I'm sure. Okay. Any other comments? Shall we then close with prayer? Gracious Father, we thank you for these chapters that are showing us again our great need of you. Help us today, Father, to consider that which we have have discussed help us to be prepared for that which you would have us to do this day direct us so that it is your character that others may see may we do that which you would want us to do 
and may we be willing to do this. Help us to these ends. For this we pray and this we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Record.